Good evening, everybody. Great to have you on board. Now it's time for The Clash. That's right. So we're being told... We're being told, there we go. We're being told to boost for our freedom this winter. And it's true that booster jabs are proving effective against the Omicron variant, apparently. But as the unvaccinated are ostracised more and more for simply exercising bodily autonomy, are we not now in danger of creating a two-tier society? Indeed, have we already done so? Well, former Prime Minister Tony Blair certainly made his contempt clear for those who choose not to be jabbed. It was on Times Radio today. Just take a look at this. We need to target the unvaccinated. I mean, we still, you know, frankly, if, if, you, if you're not vaccinated at the moment and you're, you're eligible and you've got no health reason for not being vaccinated, you're not just irresponsible. I mean, you're an idiot. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, that is, truthfully, you are. I mean, because this Omicron variant is so contagious. You know, if you're unvaccinated and you're in circulation, you're going to get it. Well, strong words, that, isn't it, from good old Blair. But is he actually wrong to call unvaccinated people idiots? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. You can tweet me and vote now in my poll at GB News. But before that, to debate Blair's provocative words is broadcaster and anti-vaccine passport campaigner Beverly Turner, top virologist and host of the Naked Scientist podcast, Dr Chris Smith and broadcaster, the one and only Mike Parry. I hope you're all well. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Right. Well, look, I think I'll start with the naked scientist, if that's all right. Dr Chris Smith, do you think that unvaccinated people are idiots? No, I don't. And I certainly wouldn't begin by uh, attacking people who are in that position. It is, at the end of the day, their right to decide whether or not they want to get vaccinated. Do I think they're stupid? Yes. Do I think that they are missing a, a trick? Yes. Do I feel irritated that people are not getting vaccinated when they could and could therefore be actually costing me as a taxpayer more money? Yes, I do. But would I actually go and attack them for it? No, I wouldn't. What I would try and do is to persuade them as to why their stance is quite probably the wrong one. OK, uh, Mike, I'll start. I'll, I'll go over to you now. Then do you think that the unvaccinated are idiots? Um, Patrick, sorry, you're talking to me, yeah? Yeah, I am, definitely, yes. Yeah, sorry, mate, yeah. Uh, I do think they're idiots. I've got nothing but massive respect for Dr Chris, who's just spoken there. You know, I've been watching him throughout the last 12 months and one of the great brains on this subject, and so I uh, hate to disagree with him. But what I would say is they're idiots because they're self-centred. They're playing Russian roulette with their own lives. That's fair enough. But don't play Russian roulette with the rest of society which is what they are doing, OK? You'll have seen some reports in some national newspapers today about doctors in intensive care units talking about 90% of the patients in there being unvaccinated oh. people suffering from COVID, who, when brought into the hospital and very ill, the first thing they say to the doctor as they're gasping for breath on the stretcher, can I have the vaccine now, please? They're playing Russian roulette with their lives, but they're playing Russian roulette with society and with the National Health Service. A patient like that soon needs 24-hour treatment, and that can take up to 12 nurses and doctors attending that person round the clock for weeks, if not months, on end. If that's not an idiot who doesn't understand the pressure that he or she is putting on society in the National Health Service, then I don't know what an idiot is. And okay. we've been right. far too easy on these people, far too easy. If we can track and trace the way we do, a mate of mine got pinged today to be told he'd got a positive result from a PRC yeah. he took yesterday, and then it was followed up by a load more emails and texts telling him he must register, telling him he must not go out, he must self-isolate for 10 days. Well, when people are sent a, an invitation to go for a, a vaccine, to go for a booster, and they don't respond to it or they reject it, they must be on the record. OK, all Therefore, right, Mike, 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 Mike we'll stop. Uh, yes, I'll come back to you. I'll up, come back to you. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Strong stuff. Beverly, you heard all of that now. What's your take? Can I just ask Mike a quick question? Have you, have you had COVID-19, Mike? I can't answer that question, I'm sorry. You don't know definitively. Fair. I mean, to be fair, no. I don't know definitively if I've had it, but... I exactly, exactly, but, exactly. But go, go on, Beverly, go on. OK, because 
what I'm surrounded by at the moment are, and I think what we're all seeing, everybody in our family knows somebody at the moment who has had Omicron yeah. recently and have been mildly unwell for four or five days and have gone, oh my goodness, is that what I put my life on hold? for 18 months for. And they have mm. ha shared your anger, Mike. They've shared your frustrations. They've shared your fear. And suddenly they get what is effectively for the vast majority of people, to quote Chris Whitty from 18 months ago, for the vast majority of people, this will be a mild illness. Mm. And that yeah. remains the case. If you are over 70, you are still more likely to die of COVID. If you are under 70, you are still more likely to die of flu. So. To suggest that we're in uh, a situation where people who are choosing not to have the vaccine, who may be young, may be healthy, may have had COVID-19 already and believe in natural immunity, these are the people who are not necessarily having, um, having the jabs. And I would defend their rights to not but have the not jabs because they are in ICU. Right. They're not in Be hospital. Right. And in fact, the majority, the minority, I think the number of beds that currently have COVID-19 patients in them, it's less than, it's about 7% in the UK. They are still full yeah. of people who have heart disease, who've been smoking, who've had car crashes, who have mm. cancer, all of these diseases yeah. we've forgotten about. And so yeah. I think we need to, to move on with what is right. clearly fantastic news, that it is a mild variant that we have now, and believe in immunity for, where, for people who, who get COVID-19. And... This anger and Beverly. this frustration is just—it's just, it's just All right. damaging. It's All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to whiz back. Don't worry, Mac. I'll let, I'll let you in. Don't worry. But, 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 Dr. Chris, I want to throw over to you. Is there a chance that Tony Blair's comments are going to actually do more harm than good? I very much doubt that anyone who has so far swerved a vaccine is going to listen to Tony Blair call them an idiot and go and get a jab because of him. Uh, I think that that sort of inflammatory language is likely to put people's backs up mm. and make them even harder to convince. And just returning to the discussion we were having, the reason that I feel very uncomfortable with forcing people down particular treatment directions is that people that seem to be very vocal about this issue, but they've been very, very quiet about people who are eating themselves into oblivion. The real pandemic oh. we need to look at here and the real pandemic that's going to kill far more people than COVID is the obesity pandemic. When I first went to medical school, I remember uh, being presented with the figures for how many people in our country were overweight. And it was about 7% of men and about 11% of women. If I sat in that lecture again now, about 25 years later, those numbers would have gone up to about 50% of both sexes. And about one in four children starting school today is already overweight. Now, the consequence of that is a bill to the NHS for treating uh -huh. diabetes and chronic kidney failure and dialysis and all of the other attendant health costs, sure. heart disease, stroke, hypertension, of treating people who are overweight. Now, we don't seem to be very vocal about that. We don't have Tony Blair saying these no. fat people are stuffing their faces with chips and curries and they ought to be uh, taken to the nearest diet no, clinic, he's, found, we? he's found a weapon uh, of mass What we do there, is we try and give actually, people information to... to to, to win them over and give them information that helps them to make healthier choices. Well, I think it sets a really, really unhealthy precedent if we start forcing people. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying let's not make this unattractive for people who decide not to get a vaccine, because at the end of the day, they're costing me as a taxpayer more money. They're costing all right, me all right, also Dr. Chris, more I, stress I, 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 So why don't, we just, I, why don't we just tax people? I'm very comfortable to give them a bill. We know they're going to cost about £5,000 a day in intensive care if they end up there. I'm very comfortable okay. to, to send them a bill. You people who are eating too much. You can't uh, have it both ways. No, no. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to go to my... Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm very happy to... Everybody, silence, please. Thank you. But at the end of the day, I'm not happy to take away their choice. Thank you very much, Dr. Chris. Yeah. Mike, I'm going to go to you. That is a point, Mike, 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 Mike. That is a point. Yeah. Why do I have to get the vaccine to protect the health of, I think, a window into my future here, an obese, chain-smoking alcoholic? Yeah. Uh, yeah, listen, you can't get a jab to stop obesity. 
Obesity is factored into the National Health Service, as is smoking, as is the effects of drinking. That's why we all pay our taxes to keep the National Health Service running. This pandemic came out of nowhere. Bang, it hit us. And then through the brilliance of British scientists, through the brilliance of uh, Kate Bingham, who organised the vaccination rollout, we suddenly attacked it with great force and we got a way of protecting ourselves. But some people turned it down. Now, Dr Chris is talking about sending them a bill. Singapore have already started investigating this. They are going to track the people who've turned down the opportunity to have a vaccination and they are going to send them a bill for the damage they caused to their particular health service, Singapore being one of the most efficient countries in the world. What, what I don't get is, is that we, we simply haven't attacked the problem of the non-vaxxers who are causing a massive bump in the road on an otherwise brilliant strategy against okay. the pandemic. And we must attack them. And I don't mean attack them brutally. I don't mean attack them, yeah. you know, um, and punishing them. I mean attack the issue and okay. inform them of the All damage right. they're doing and get them persuasively to join in with the rest okay. of the country. OK, Beverly, I'll let you respond to that. But I suppose as well, look, one of the arguments is, Beverly, you know, if you're unva unvaccinated, potentially you're more likely to pass it on. And therefore, mm. you know, can you live with yourself if you do do that? Look, just talk me through all of that. Yeah. Look, the, the, the Office of National Statistics figures that came out yesterday have shown that the triple vaccinated, and this does require more investigation, is oh. the triple vaccinated are much more likely to be infected than Omicron, even than the double vaccinated. And I'm not saying that means the vaccines don't work to stop hospitalizations and death in the elderly and the unwell. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is mm. they're pretty flipping useless when it comes to stopping transmission. They're <laughs> not doing very well in that regard. They're a bit rubbish when it comes to stopping transmission. I thought the they'd be better. The disease is going. not serious enough and the vaccines are not good enough for us to be talking in these terms, in terms of penalising people who make a choice over their bodily autonomy. And if you, Mike, if you're happy with people who don't want the vaccine, young, healthy people being fined, that will not stop there. As soon as you open that can of worms, they are going to come after you, Mike, and your bag of chips. They're going to come no. after you and your lager. No, no, no. Because it will not <laughs> no, end it, there. It, it will, it will... So, it will add fuel. It will add fuel to the argument that it's a good idea to get vaccinated. Okay. There can't be a bad people idea about vaccination because va Dr. Chris will fuel. tell you it works. People don't I've, need I've any had... more persuasion. You know, the, they, the, they do. They do need persuasion. Well, there is, there is a case. Persuasion. They've had a year of it nearly. Yeah, there is, no, there no, is a no. case. There is a case. There is a case that it should be up to the governments to be able to make the argument that you should go and get it without having the need to facilitate that. But, Dr. Chris, I'll just come to you quickly. This vaccine now, I mean, Beverly obviously said there these, these, these stats about, you know, if you triple jabbed, you're more likely to get it, whatever. I mean, actually, what are the stats when it comes to whether or not, if you've had this vaccine, are you significantly, significantly less likely to get COVID? and less likely to pass it on. Because if the answers to those things are, are, are no, then frankly, Tony Blair can't call anyone an idiot for not getting it, can he? Uh, the answer is that it varies with age and with time. Now, when a person is first vaccinated, give or take a couple of weeks, you build quite a strong immune response, very high levels of antibody, good T cells, and the result of that is you are very hard to infect. But with time and with age, levels drop, and they drop faster the older you are. And so you then enter a domain where, while you have been vaccinated, and whilst you will still be protected against severe disease, you could still catch the infection, but you won't catch it badly. And you have been protected from being infected to a very high degree for quite a long time. We're talking months here. So if our aim is to effectively moderate the spread of the infection through the population, then actually vaccination is good at doing that because it will retard the rate of transmission because it makes people much harder to infect when they're fairly recently vaccinated. And if you can't be infected, you can't pass it on. Okay. But a reference was made to Kate Bingham earlier, the vaccine task force lead who, who set up the vaccine task force in the first place and, and yeah. purchased the vaccines. The instruction given to her by the prime minister was we have to stop people dying. And that has been delivered in spades. That's what the vaccines are really very good at. And I think they're going to bear fruit against Omicron as well. OK. But the, the, the fact remains, they do stop you getting infected. They, they do do that for at least a considerable while. And if All they right. can do that, they can actually slow down spread. Okay.